This is a breakdown of the first episode of Breaking Bad. Keep track of how many of the 23 details you already knew and leave a comment with your number. At 58 minutes, it's actually the longest episode of Breaking Bad. We open with a, you're probably wondering how I got here trope that starts with the climax of the episode. We're left with a lot of questions about what's going on. As it is a TV pilot, it goes out of its way to name the main characters and explain who they are. My name is Walter Hartwell White. Skyler, you are the love of my life. Walter Jr., you're my big man. We get a taste of Walt's depressing life as he turns 50, both at home and at school. Professionally, he went from contributing to Nobel Prize winning research to teaching chemistry to unmotivated high school students. Maybe his background in crystallography makes him a natural when it comes to crystal meth? Also, the real 1985 Nobel Chemistry Prize was related to crystallized materials, so this seems based in truth. His birthday celebration is depressing, especially because that's veggie bacon. What the hell is this? Veggie bacon. We're watching our cholesterol, I guess. It was later established that this takes place on September 7th, 2008, which is a Sunday. So this being a school day is a mistake. Breaking Bad has some worse timeline inconsistencies than this, though, as we'll discuss in later videos. Growth? then decay, then transformation. Transformation is a big theme. Creator Vince Gilligan always said that the premise of this show was, we're gonna take Mr. Chips and we're gonna turn him into Scarface. But let's revisit this at the end of the video. We're given hints of the White's money problems throughout the episode. Buy a new hot water heater. And Walt has to work at a car wash after school where he gets humiliated working on a student's car. Hey, Mr. White, make those tires shine, huh? Oh my god. <laughs> Bogdan is played by Marius Stan, who wasn't even an actor before Breaking Bad. He's a chemist who works for the Los Alamos National Laboratory. Walt gets a proper surprise party, so Veggie Bacon wasn't his only gift. Surprise! Although it's hard to tell if the guests are even his friends, or Skyler's friends, or if he even likes any of these people. Except for Carmen the principal, who we know he likes a little too much. By the way, Carmen is the actress's real name as well, and this ribbon strategically covers the brand of wine on purpose. We get more explicit character introductions. Carmen, this is my sister Marie. Listen up, I'm gonna give a little toast! A little toast to my brother-in-law, come here! And poor Walt gets emasculated by Hank, who becomes the center of attention. It's just heavy. That's why they hire men. <laughs> Brian Cranston had the idea for Hank to take the beer out of his hand. The Strovia! The Strovia! Oh shit, turn on channel three! It's clearly an ongoing operation, one which was... Uh... Well organized. Hank, how much money is that? This opens Walt's eyes to how lucrative the meth business can be. It's easy money. Till we catch you. <laughs> Walt, just say the word and uh, I'll take you on a ride along. Get a little excitement in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. After the party, there's that awkward bedroom scene, you know the one, that continues to paint the picture of Walt's depressing life. The next day, Walt collapses, leading to the discovery of his... Lung cancer. Inoperable. And the brilliant way he reacts to the news. It's just... You've got mustard on your... In real life, the oncologist's office is a house next to Crazy Eight's house. By the way, this EMT went to high school with Anna Gunn. And this light is artificial. This was shot at night into Hajali. So my records show that I paid it. And with that, Skylar becomes the first one to lie. Is she the one breaking bad? How was your day? I don't know. It was, um... Fine. Okay, that didn't take long for Walt to lie as well. After Walt's epic quitting scene... Fuck you, Bogdan. What? I said fuck you! And your eyebrows! Wipe down this! He decides to accept Hank's offer. I've been uh, thinking about that offer. Uh, that ride-along. This scene is actually the first one they shot. In the real world, it is illegal for civilians to ride in a DEA vehicle. Due to budget constraints, they couldn't fill this school bus with kids, so one of the producers is the only passenger. Walt and Jesse are both in their underwear when first introduced to us. After the ride-along, Walt tracks down Jesse and blackmails him into joining forces. You know the business, and I know the chemistry. You want to cook crystal meth? Either that, or I turn you in. He then steals lab equipment from his school and works out a plan with Jesse. The piece de resistance. 
round bottom boiling flask. Notice how this flask is cloudy, then clear, then cloudy again. They sprayed it with dull coats so you wouldn't see the crew in the reflection, but some shots were filmed before they did that. What if we rented one of those self-storage places? No. They're onto that. They got dogs that sniff around. RV. That's what you want. Jesse's the one who came up with the RV plan, saving Walt from a quick arrest had they gone with his storage unit plan. Walt is so desperate that he trusts Jesse with all his savings. Dude, this isn't even seven grand. All right, my guy wants 85. This is all the money I have in the world. Some straight like you, giant stick up his ass, all of a sudden at age, what, 60? He's just gonna break bad? Here we get the little known Southern expression that's the reason for the title. It seems weird for Jesse to use this specific expression, but it had to be done. Vince Gilligan specifically wanted the mountain to cut through Walt's head like an arrow, although I don't know who would pick up on such a detail. At the clothing store, we get a taste of Walt's pent-up frustration boiling over into uncharacteristic oh, violence. My big boy pants. <laughs> hey, mommy, I think I pinched a loaf in my brand new big boy pants. <laughs> <laughs> Walt and Jesse go out to the desert for their first cook, and we see the storyline starting to connect with the episode's intro. Got some big cow house way out that way, like two miles. Cow house? Yeah, where they live. The cows. This, this is art, Mr. White. Actually, it's just basic chemistry, but thank you, Jesse. I'm glad it's acceptable. Now that they've produced meth, Jesse thinks he can rely on Crazy 8 for distribution. Emilio. He thinks maybe you dined on Crazy 8 blames Jesse for Emilio's arrest, although we now know that Crazy 8 was the snitch. They also demand to know who made the meth. I know you little punk ass didn't cook it. He was there when I got busted. He's with the DEA. No. Run, Mr. Wright, run! You let us both live. I'll teach you my recipe. Emilio Koyama is played by John Koyama, who's an accomplished stuntman and stunt coordinator. Put the cigarette out. Instead of iodine, Walt adds red phosphorus to create lethal phosphine gas and somehow is strong enough to trap Crazy 8 and Emilio in the RV. They create the five iconic bullet holes. Similar to the earlier flask, Walt is shiny in some shots because he was required to wear fire retardant gel. And with this iconic shot, we're back to the start of the episode. Not to take away from this dramatic scene, but look at that face in the rock. Walt decides to end it all there, but forgot that the safety was on. When the three fire trucks whiz by, notice that the middle one is just a solid yellow blob. That's because they only had two fire trucks, and the middle one was their catering truck. That vomit is canned soup that he was storing on his ankle. Who are you? Worst that you can do is shut me out. And that's the pilot. Is this the best pilot ever, or are there others that you think beat this? How many of the 23 details did you already know? Regarding Walt's changing over time, we are in a transformation. My character is metamorphosizing from one kind of person to another. He does gain confidence over time, but in this first episode, he has already cooked meth, stolen stuff, blackmailed Jesse, lied to his family, and killed Emilia. There's a strong case that he has always been a monster. This is the first of many, many breakdown videos, so let me know what you like or don't like about the format, and maybe I can tweak things going forward. Shout out to my channel members and everyone's continuing support. Walt, is that you?